Hello, my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. And uh, I would just like to say thank you very much for my subscribers. I'm almost to 200, so I'm getting there. So if you got any friends who you think might be interested in seeing, uh, seeing a guy do whatever the hell it is that I do, send them my way. Tell them to subscribe. I'd appreciate it. The more viewers I get, the more stuff I can do, I guess. Well, I'm going to do it no matter what, so... Those of you who do watch my videos, thank you very much. So today started out as a usual day does. I get up with aches and pains, and boy, did I have some aches and pains. If you watched my video yesterday, I trimmed my palm tree. Let me open up my garage door here. I trimmed my palm tree because they charge a couple hundred bucks to do that, and I have all the stuff I need to knock that out. And if I could save a couple hundred bucks, that means I can utilize it to keep things going in the garage here. And if you watch to the end of the video, I mentioned something about looking for a new project. Well, shortly after I um, got the video all uploaded, I headed out to look at a project, and uh, it was a Kawasaki 1000, uh, ZG1000 Concours. Now I had one of those, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. So I knew about the bike and the guy was actually very reasonable on the price, but uh, even at the low price that it was, I just didn't think it was the right project for me because it had a salvage title, it needed tires, a lot of the plastics on it was broken, foot pegs were broken off of it, and he said the front forks were a little bit out of alignment, so maybe you could just adjust them a little bit, but probably they were slightly bent, so it just was a little bit more than I wanted to deal with. Um, even though I think there might have been a little bit of money in it if I got done with it. Um, it was probably better for someone who wanted the bike for themselves to hold on to. Because you could have got it going. And um, maybe got it a little bit cheaper than you can get another one. So anyway. Back of my truck. I need to get all this stuff in it. That I trimmed off the palm tree. But. There's something in there. Yeah, I drug home another scooter. So I got this little scooter last night at about 8.30, 9 o'clock last night. So what do y'all think? Think it'll run? We can make her go we'll see what we can do with it today so let me move some stuff around here in the global domination headquarters of tom's tinkering and adventures and we'll put it up on the lift and we will see if we can't get that little scooter to move under its own power today yeah it's gonna be a good day there she is in all her glory offloaded from the truck this is a kimco Kimco, I know it says it on here someplace. There you go, right there. Kimco, BMW 250, bet and win. I didn't know what the heck that stood for until I read that. And I even have a service manual came with it. I think some of the broken parts are in here. If I can open this thing, because there's a broken, uh, well, I'll get that open later. This uh, turn signal cover is off of here. It looks like this little tab is broken. But we can fab something up to fix that. She's a bit dirty. A little bit of scuffing on it here. But I think it's going to clean up nicely. It does have the top box. And I also have a uh, old man windshield to put on here. So we'll clean all that up. But first and foremost, we got to get her running. So let's pull this battery out of here. Pull the battery and get it charged up. And I know it's been sitting for a while, so I am going to be pulling this carburetor out as well. Pull the carburetor out and I'll show y'all how I work on carburetors in my garage. Go batteries out. Put that over here and get the charger going. 
and I'll get set up over here to pull the carburetor once that thing is cooking up. All right, battery is on the bench. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just pull this carburetor out. Anytime I buy something that's been sitting, that's the first thing I'll go after. Pull the carburetor off and just clean it because if it's been sitting more than a couple of months, like more than say uh, 90 days, these carburetors get gummed up really easily on motorcycles. The passages inside the carburetor are so small that it doesn't take much and today's fuel, especially ethanol laced fuel, is really bad at, uh, at loading up these carburetors with crap. Tight fit in here, ladies and gentlemen. Tight fit. Let's see if we can get this boot off the back. And get some wires going in here. We'll have to track down in just a minute. These look like they're under this side panel, so I'm going to pop that off and see if we can't find out where they go. After struggling working through that uh, carburetor access hole, I just decided to remove the whole seat pan here. And this comes off pretty easy. On most of these scooters, it's very similar. Usually you got a couple of, uh, couple of nuts or bolts in the back and a couple in the front. And this whole tray will come out. Of course, you have to have your battery out. And on this one, I had to um, pop this fuse panel out, which is pretty easy. It's got a little tab right there. So after that, I got a lot more access in here. And I got a little bit ahead of myself here with the, with the recording, or without recording, I mean to say. Let me see if I can find a place to set this thing down on here. But anyway, I got the carburetor mostly out already here. I actually took this little plunger, which I'm 99.9% .9 certain is the um, cold start, which is like an automatic choke. I disconnected that. I disconnected the throttle cables. I just took the whole assembly off here because this is kind of a weird setup one I haven't seen, and it was kind of a pain in the butt to get it off. So I just took this whole plate off because it came off pretty easy. And then this, uh, this is a throttle position sensor right here on the side of the carburetor, and that goes down, down here. And I already unplugged that plug. And I had this on the bottom of the carburetor here, which I just unplugged. And then this is a drain hose overflow. It probably goes back to a charcoal canister or something. And the uh, fuel line I disconnected already, which is right here. Fuel line goes on the side of the carburetor right there. So I disconnected that. And I got the carburetor off. So having done this a couple times, I can usually tell right away if there's an issue because you use the old uh, mechanic's nose. You can smell the fuel and it smells old in here. So, the next thing to do is to clean off my workbench a little bit. I'll lay out a towel here so it's easy to find the parts and pieces and then I disassemble this thing. And then it goes into the bath. So this is an ultrasonic cleaner. What you do is you fill this up with, uh, I usually fill it up with a 50-50 mixture of water and uh, pine saw, pine 
cleaner. So I probably have some off-brand stuff. It's probably not pine salt. So I'll take the parts apart, put it all in there, and then I'll show you how this thing works in a minute. We'll uh, get started taking this carburetor apart. Our bench is set up, so we're gonna start on the carburetor. I'm gonna pull the uh, diaphragm cover off the top. So if you've never taken a carburetor apart, underneath here's a spring. And then you have a diaphragm here, which, uh, let me see if I can show you. Inside of here is the slide. And this is all vacuum operated. So as more air goes through here, that lifts up as your throttle butterfly opens. So this is what the uh, throttle controls. So that opens up, more air is going into the engine, you get vacuum and this thing lifts up. So here's my mechanics uh, storage bits and pieces. Everything goes into the tubs. Now we're gonna take the float bowl off. There's a little bit of fuel in here. And like I said, I can smell it. Now, if you're at all familiar with uh, working on Japanese vehicles, if any of you are watching this and are familiar, you might be screaming at me that I am using the wrong screwdriver. So even though these look like regular Phillips head screws, Japanese vehicles use what is called JIS, I believe, and don't quote me on this, we can look it up afterwards, JIS is Japanese Industrial Standard. Now, Phillips head will work on them, and many times you'll get them out, but if these are in here just a little bit tight, you'll strip them out, because they have a little bit different angle in there. I don't want to go spewing facts, because I'm not certain what that angle is. But just be known, just let it be known that um, you should use a JIS tip on these. Now I had one that has gone missing, so I do need to order some more JIS screwdrivers. So if you're working on items and you're like, these screws are crap, they're stripping out all the time, well, you might want to look into that. And with today's uh, worldwide connectivity, it's very easy to just order them online. There we go. The float bowl doesn't look terrible, but it's not perfect either. And the float, main jet, pilot jet. I'll be removing all of these. Through the magic of video, we got this thing completely disassembled, or as far disassembled as I'm going to do it. I did have actual pine saw. Loaded up the ultrasonic cleaner with about a 50-50 mix of pine saw and water. This has a heat function as well, so I got it heating up right now. I did put hot water in there, but um, the items that I'm gonna put in the ultrasonic cleaner are the float bowl, because this has some passages in it that can get clogged up pretty easily. And I'll put these little covers in there, because those also have little passages in them. Yeah, one of these is for the accelerator pump, and I can't remember what the other one is for. Mm, the float, well, that's just going to float in there, but we'll put it in. It'll clean it off. And then there's the, the needle. Yeah, what the hell, let's put that in too. Won't hurt it. The 
the entire carburetor body, which sometimes it fits in here and sometimes only half of it fits. So what we'll do is we'll soak the bottom half of it first because it's got most of the most of the passages on it and then we'll turn it around the other way and then we have let's see here is the main jet holder a little bit of corrosion on it the main jet itself can you see through that yeah you can see through it even on the video here put that in there this is the pilot jet. Now this is usually what gets clogged up. I probably need some light to see through that. And then I'm not even sure what this little jet is called. But it was in part of the float bowl. But it looks fine, but we'll soak that up too. And there's the stuff we will put aside because it doesn't really need to soak. You don't need to wash screws and springs and stuff. I'll put the lid on it, which kind of goes on it. So it's set for 480 seconds. And what it does is it uses uh, ultrasonic vibrations and it works pretty good it breaks up the chunks inside of the um, carburetor and it's gonna come out pretty clean but what I'm probably gonna have to do is run it several times so in the meantime we're probably gonna do a little bit of looking around at this thing make sure the oil looks okay and might as well check the tires and just kind of start doing a little bit of a wipe down on it. The battery is still charging. So now it's just time to let it cook. Pretty exciting stuff watching it cook here, huh? Well, it's, uh, now it's really hot in here. It's like uncomfortably hot. I gotta dig some pieces out just to show you. It's looking considerably cleaner. The brass pieces usually get really nice if I can get some out of there. Oh, it's hot. There you go. Look at how much nicer that looks already. If we can focus. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. It's thinking about it. But anyway, I am going to flip this. I flipped this over once or twice, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to run it a couple more times just because. And then through the magic of video, this thing will be all back together the next time you see it. Carburetor's all nice and clean. Back in one piece. While I was waiting for that, I wiped down the bike a little bit, did a little bit of a detailing on it, but just uh, sponge and water didn't do too much, but uh, cleaned up okay. So now we're going to reinstall this fella, and I think the battery is charged up. Let's take a look at that. Well, it says it's still charging. We'll test it with the meter. And I need to run and get some fuel, put some fresh fuel in here. But I imagine in about uh, 20 to 30 minutes, we'll be giving it a try. Fortunately for you, it's going to be pretty quick, a lot less than that. It's expensive around these parts. Don't tell anybody, this is not an official California compliant fuel jug here. $395, oh, $396. It's a damn shame. Sometimes when you're working on stuff that other people have worked on in the past, you find some interesting stuff. So I noticed that this thing, this uh, ground cable, just looked a little bit funny. And I look closer at it, it's just a piece of sheet metal that somebody 
bent up and bent over this and smashed on here. So while this is going to work for now, I'm going to have to uh, get a little bit better end on it. Here's what they're kind of supposed to look like. But that'll work for now. So I got the uh, seat pan all back installed. And I got my expensive can of gas. So let me put some gas in here and we'll get the battery on it. And let's see if this thing is going to run. Well, I got her full of gas. It filled up quicker than I thought. I actually spilled a bit of gas at that price. It's a damn shame. Battery is installed. Let's see what happens here. And it looks like our fuel gauge doesn't work. It's showing empty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We got a little bit of life in her. Fuel gauge is showing full now. I don't know what that light is for. It's a little bit on the cold blooded side. had life to her. Well, she sort of runs. Let me take a look and see if I can find out what that light means. And now it's out. So I'm going to take a look in the uh, owner's manual thing here and see if I can figure that out. And then we'll go from there. Well, this is a service manual, not really an owner's manual. So it doesn't really mention what in the heck that light there means. I'll look it up online. I see met and in. So it's like metric and in inches. I don't know. I don't know what that means. But I went in here and I bumped up the idle. Something's still a little funky with this fuel gauge. It just decides when it wants to move on its own. But I bumped up the idle and it appears to be running okay now. Let's see, where the heck is the key? I'm gonna show you how we do the idle on this thing here. Oh, that one's bent. No wonder it doesn't work so good. Idle adjust is right there, it's just a screw. You can turn it. You'll hear it slowing down. So I bump that up a little bit. All the gauges seem to work. High beam, left turn. Right turn. High beam. There you go. Horn works. That crake works. I think it's time we take her for a test spin up and down the driveway. What do y'all think? I think that's it. All right, I don't know how good of a view this is gonna be here. But I think I found out what that red light is for. I'm almost positive I did, and we'll check it out when we get back here into the garage, but here we go. Oh, it's shaky on that camera, huh? Oh, this, thing is, this thing is a little bit powerful. Not bad. Let's take it up the street just a little bit. Yeah, it scoots right up to third. 
30, and I imagine this thing will probably go about 70 miles an hour or so, the 250 motor. Not bad. So I was concerned about that red light over here. Thought that maybe it was a um, oil light or something. But I'm almost 99% positive I figure out what it is. It's a light that says when this seat is open. Latch it down, it's closed. There you go. So that's what that is. Um, inside of... Uh, Look at me, I'm still wearing my helmet, just in case, you never know. So inside of here, I saw a wire running up under the side, and I'm willing to bet that there's supposed to be a light right in here. So then you have a sort of like a dome light inside of there, or a cargo light. But altogether, I'm pretty pleased. Clean the carburetor, cleaned up a little bit of stuff. I still got some like real detailing to do on this thing, but uh, turned out to be a nice little machine. And when I don't have to hold on to a camera with one hand, I can take it out and really test it and see how it does. But a good project for a good day. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.